Hi, this is the Tropical Tippet for Thursday, September 14th. Quick update here on Hurricane Lee, continuing to make its move toward the north now, about to make its closest approach tonight to Bermuda, where we're already seeing elevated winds near tropical storm force, seeing sustained winds of between 35 and 40 miles per hour with gusts nearing 50 miles per hour at the time of this recording. As you can see, the southeasterly flow hooking over the island now. Tropical storm warning is in place, but fortunately the island will avoid the hurricane force core of Lee as it passes by toward the west. As we get into Friday evening, uh, this will be moving up and bringing impacts to the New England coastline and southeastern Canada. And then as we head into Saturday, it will be moving deeper into the Gulf of Maine and spreading conditions inland over Maine, most of Nova Scotia, and portions of New Brunswick in southeastern Canada. If you look at the model guidance, uh, one of the pieces of good news we have today is we have some clarity on the track as we've seen a significant narrowing of the possibilities that we've been discussing over the last couple of days. We finally have good agreement between the two major models, the European model and the GFS model. If we look at Saturday morning on the European model, there's where it is. It's shifted east from where it was a few runs before. You can see that uh, yesterday it was a little closer to Cape Cod, and now it's shifted east in the last three or four runs of the model. And if we look at the GFS at the same time, these are pretty close together now, similar locations as opposed to being over 100 miles apart like they were yesterday and in previous days. And if we look at the ensemble, this is the cloud of possible locations on Saturday afternoon, all these red numbers here, and you can see how this cloud has shifted relative to just yesterday when we had uh, we talked about the fast group and the slow group of members where the slow group was farther west. That group has been essentially eliminated in the most recent runs of the ensemble with a very clear trend toward the fast group being the winner, so to speak. And this is now the most likely outcome as every major model now agrees on a track into the eastern Gulf of Maine or close to the western coastline of Nova Scotia. This is great for planning because now we can kind of isolate where the edge of the hazards is likely to align, especially on the western side in terms of New England. And we can look at one possible model solution here, just looking at the wind field. This is roughly consistent with the NHC forecast track, half B, similar to where uh, NHC expects the storm to be on Saturday morning. And you can see the core of strong wind here. Again, as this approaches from the south, we could have tropical storm conditions arriving as early as late Friday evening. You can see the green colors, which indicates tropical storm force winds approaching Nova Scotia and Cape Cod by around uh, midnight on Friday, early Saturday morning. And as we get into uh, daylight on Saturday, this will be spreading all through the Gulf of Maine and along coastal New England. You can see the green colors encroaching on the whole coastline here, extending from southeastern Massachusetts through the New Hampshire and Maine coastlines. So tropical storm warnings are out along that entire section of coastline. And even a hurricane watch in Maine, it would be a little surprising to see sustained hurricane force winds here because again, the water is quite cold and Lee will be weakening and slowing down as it moves over that cold water. And you might remember from a couple of videos ago, we talked about the so-called best case scenario here. It'll still be a, a storm, but the best case here is that it slows down moving over the eastern Gulf of Maine, allowing the maximum winds to weaken the maximum possible amount before the storm actually makes landfall. And we are actually seeing a reality that will likely be close to that. You can see it moving slowly toward the north-northeast, deep into the eastern Gulf of Maine, and you can see the most intense colors diminishing on this model as the max winds decrease from hurricane force to something closer to 60 miles per hour by the time it finally moves into Canada. But there could still be hurricane force gusts, especially on the northwestern side, where some of the strongest winds will be. You can see this belt of red here offshore of uh, coastal New England. Now, the good news is that a track, if it does in fact materialize near western Nova Scotia, will keep the core of the very strongest winds potentially offshore here, but we will still see winds of over 40 or 50 miles per hour scraping along the coastline, especially near Cape Cod, which sticks out into the ocean there. And this is also where the greatest hazard for coastal flooding will be due to the northerly fetch into this uh, part of the, the coastline of Massachusetts. This is the NHC official forecast showing that track. You can see the very large wind field here in orange. So again, the cone is not the cone of hazards. It's the cone of where the center will pass. Uh, but the center here is really just a, a center of this huge blob that you'll have to mentally translate up here. And you can see that that will overlap a great segment of southeastern Canada and coastal New England, where again, we have tropical storm watches and warnings 
Warnings for Cape Cod and southeastern Massachusetts, technically still a watch for New Hampshire in this part of Maine. There's a little uncertainty as to whether the gale force wind field will extend all the way to the coastline in that concave part of the coastline there. The good news about this forecast shift, you can see it's back toward the east. Yesterday it was just a little farther west here, so we've seen a nudge back toward Nova Scotia. And the good news about that is it really sets the edge for the greatest hazards near coastal New England and inland Maine, but it kind of takes areas like Long Island, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, kind of out of the most uh, severe hazards here. And so the core of the storm will remain east. And although the wind field is very large, it will only extend probably over the coastal areas of New England and then perhaps inland Maine as the storm moves up. And this is also where the heaviest rainfall will be to the northwest of the track in coastal and inland Maine as well. Uh, the bad news about this track for Canadian interests is that it gets it a little bit closer to places like Halifax, where we will see the strong onshore flow here. And we can see on that model forecast that we just showed that the gale force wind field now extends outward as far as that Halifax area of central Nova Scotia. So uh, portions of Nova Scotia and New Brunswick will see uh, greater impacts from wind and potential for coastal flooding with this nudge back toward the east in the NHC track. And you can see hurricane watch is in effect uh, for the southwestern portion of Nova Scotia as well. Keep in mind that the Canadian Hurricane Center will have more fine-tuned local products for Canadian residents. This is a national hurricane center graphic, which is primarily for the United States. This is also the surge forecast that we have now from NHC since we're close enough to landfall that we have enough certainty to actually do some forecasting of how much coastal flooding could occur due to the fetch. You can see that a few feet above normally dry ground uh, could occur along the entire coastline of New England, but really focusing here on the Cape Cod area of Massachusetts because this is the part of the coastline where the northerly winds could be pushing water right into areas where water could pile up two to four feet above normally dry ground. So that will be the, the biggest thing to watch in, in terms of flooding risk along the coastline as gale force winds, perhaps in excess of 50 miles per hour, come screaming out of the north uh, during the closest approach of Lee. And again, there will be some heavy rainfall risk as well, bringing potential for inland flash flooding, elevated slight risk over most of central and eastern Maine, extending from the coastline all the way to the Canadian border. The fact that the track confidence has increased and we're expecting it into the eastern Gulf of Maine does mean that it really sets the edge here on the western side where the rain will occur and keeps it east of the Maine Metropolitan Corridor, though there still could be plenty of rain in Boston, but only a slight risk of flash flooding here across most of Maine, and there will be elevated uh, risk for flooding over southeastern Canada as well, uh, but you'll have to visit the Canadian Hurricane Center for local products for those provinces. I couldn't find any graphics myself, but there are text products for you to read about your flooding risk, including for storm surge. That's about it for this video on Lee. Again, conditions will start deteriorating in New England and southeastern Canada as soon as Friday evening. We're already seeing conditions deteriorating in Bermuda where a tropical storm warning is effect. And again, it will get windy along coastal New England with storm surge potential and tropical storm force winds and even a hurricane watch along coastal Maine and southeastern Canada also under hurricane watches as well. So stay, stay safe, know your vulnerability, and be prepared just in case conditions get bad in your local area. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.